Next, we're going to draw a plumb line up here along the side of these tiles, a plumb line up here along the side of the tiles, and we're going to bring two columns of tiles up alongside the niche. We're now going to place the, the spirit level up against the edge of the tiles, ensuring that the bubble is in the centre of the two lines and that the level is tight against the edge of the tiles. Now I'm going to draw a plumb line up and continue the plumb line up. Taking our time, making sure that the bubble is nice in the middle of the two lines. I'm now going to place the level against the other end of the tiles. Making sure again the bubble's in the middle. And I'll draw my plumb line up. And continue the line up. And the bubble's in the middle. So we now have plumb line up that edge of the tiling. We have a plumb line up this edge of the tiling. We are now going to tile up this end column here in between the two lines. This plumb line here is the inside of the tile, plumb line here on the outside. What I would normally do, I would serrate the whole area using a notch trowel that I showed you earlier on. But for beginners, I think it would be a lot easier for you to batter each tile individually like this, ensuring you've got 100% coverage of the tile. So all the tile is covered with adhesive. We can then place the tile on our tile, a gentle little massage again, a little feel of the fingers to make sure that the tile's nice and flush, it's not lipping. We're then going to place our two tile spacers to give us our, our two mill joint. When the adhesive is in the bucket, mixed up, it has a longer pot life. We, we call it in the trade pot life because the adhesive is in the pot um, or the tub. And because it's in a bigger mass and it's not overly exposed to the um, oxygen, in, is, the oxygen is what cures the adhesive, makes, it, makes the adhesive cure, dry. So. When it's mixed up in the bucket, you've got probably an hour or so. Massage it in. A good tip when we're tiling is always to have a bucket of clean water and a sponge. This allows us to keep our hands tidy, clean, and also, as we're tiling, we will get bits of adhesive on the tile. If we wash them off now and keep the surface area of our tile nice and clean, when it comes to doing the grouting process, it makes our life a lot easier as we don't have to clear any adhesive off in between the joints that has now gone hard. So it's easy to keep the tile nice and clean while the tile adhesive is nice and soft. Again, I have some little bit of adhesive there. Nice white, clean. Okay. 
So I'm going to place one more on the column and then we're going to move over to the other side and bring the other side up to match this side. Again, good practice is to check that our toe, although we have our plumb line drawn, I always like to double check and make sure that our tiling is nice and plumb and that this bubble is perfectly in the middle of the two lines and that the tiles are all tight close to the edge of the spirit level. We haven't got one sloping over and leaving a small gap. But this is what we're looking for. A nice clean straight line. We're now going to tile this column to the same height as this column. Again, a gentle massage using your fingertips to feel for any lipping, lippiness. The toes are nice and even as flat. And again, place our spaces in, one either side. Never be tempted guys when you're doing tiling is to just try and speed things up by just putting one spacer in the middle. This will always tend to make the tile move unevenly. So always be mindful to make sure you put one in that end and one in the other. That way we ensure that we get a nice even joint. Two more to go. two in and there we have our two columns going up and I'm checking with my spirit level that the tiles are in alignment with the with the spirit level and the bubble is perfectly in the middle Perfect. now I've completed completed both columns I've now placed the level on top of the two columns of the tiles and I'm going to check that my tile is level from this end to this end as you can see the bubble is in directly in between the two lines. We now know that our tiling is plumb and is level. Now what we're going to do now is now we've got these two columns up, we can see clearly what cuts we had to mark. We have something to mark against here, here and here. So firstly what I'm going to do I'm going to 
cut the tiles along the seal of the niche or the window. So by placing the tile here on the bottom of the tile and marking the top of the seal there, I then check that it's all the same size cut. So I move it along, 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 along. And I can see that I can cut this tile here all the same size. If there was a slight raise from one end to the other, what we would do, we would still cut the tile the same size, but we would cut it at the highest point. So the tile would run through, and then it would probably be a couple of mil higher here at this end, but then we could always make that good so that we have a nice level seal. So we don't tile to, if the, to the line of the seal if the seal's running down. So I'm now going to demonstrate how to cut the tiles using a tile cutter. This is a ruby tile cutter. It's produced in Spain and it's a favourite of many tilers. Many tilers like to use the ruby. I'd say it's the most popular choice for tilers. Um, it works on a twin rail system that moves up and down and across. And these two runners here have ball bearings inside, which makes for a nice smooth action, like so. As I explained before, we need to score through the glaze of the tile, which gives the tile its strength. So what we have here, the scoring wheel, this is what cuts through the glaze of the tile. The glaze of the tile is what gives the tile its strength. So I will now demonstrate how to cut through the glaze of the tile using the ruby cutting machine. I'm now going to place the tile along the back edge here of the cutter and I'm going to align it up with the scoring wheel. So you can see that the scoring wheel is in line with the, with the mark. I'm now going to use this sliding gauge and I'm going to tighten it so that it doesn't move and I now can score through the tile. Now the tile's been scored, I can now place the tile snappers in line with the cut, the score line, I'm in line, the pliers are either side of the line running parallel with the line there. Place my other hand over the tile and gently squeeze. And I'll have the perfect cut. What we have now is we have this set. So we know that if we push the tile along the back and against the gauge, we're going to have exactly the same size cut. So again, the same procedure. I want to hear this scoring noise as we go through the glaze. Take the tile out, holding it in line. And here I'll show you here. After cutting two of the tiles, I can line them up. As you can see, that they're perfectly in line there and perfectly in line there. So setting the machine with the gauge like so is really good practice. It, it ensures that we've got equal cuts, all the same size. Now I've cut two of these tiles for the window sill. I'm now going to straight the back of the tile with the adhesive, using the serrating trowel or notch trowel. Uh, place it here. We massage it in the place, a spacer there, a spacer there. Okay. 
Yeah. As you can see, toes are nice and level. Yeah, I'm now placing the third toe along the bottom of the wind window or the niche, placing it in line, pressing, making sure the toes are nice and flat, no lippies. To there. there we have the three tiles. <clears throat> now we can mark this cut and take this row up. Is we have the machine set at this cut, don't we? On the gauge. So I'm gonna mark this approximately where it is, this mark, like so. It's approximate. So we know that this is this bit here. I'm now gonna check up here for the widest point of the side of the niche or window. If this is perfectly plumb, then we can cut it all the same size. But if it's a little bit out, we have to make sure we cut it to the widest point. So again, I'm going to check it at the bottom. Check it there, check it there, and I'm quite happy that this is all the same size by running the tile up and checking. Right, <clears throat> I'm now going to use the set square and I run it along this line. I'm going to run it along line here as well. Now I'm going to check the tile against the wall and this piece here, this cut here, I'm going to mark with that little mark like so because I know this bit I've already got the cutting machine set at the correct cut line. So I'm going to come around and I'm going to place the tile against the back edge and against my gauge mark and I can see that this is the the mark because I have the X there and the line there and you can see that this is the cut I need to make. Now I've made that cut I can now set the gauge here for this cut, because this cut needs to be all the same as we go up the side of the niche. So I'm going to put it where it needs to be, there in line, slightly alter the gauge, so it's against the tile, so the tile's perfectly flat against there and tight against the gauge, and I'm just going to gently score through to the point there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to score from corner to corner, approximately, it doesn't have to be perfectly on, on each point. I'm just gonna gently score through. Now I'm going to use my toe nippers to cut the, the shape out of the toe. Holding the toe nippers in line with the diagonal cut, diagonal score I put in on the ruby. I just gently hold it close to my body, hold it about three or four mil away from the score line and gently press away a, a down with the pinches. And that way we get approximately 40% of the cut out in one go. I'm then gonna use the toe nippers to cut the rest of this piece of tile out. Holding the tile nippers in line with the cut, I'm going to just hold the pinches in about five or six mil into the tile, not completely like that. Okay, that will break, make the tile break. So I'm just going to hold it about three or four mil in, in line with the cut, and just gently 
nip away at the area that we need to take out. I'm now going to turn the tail round and the same procedure in line, tail nippers in line and just generally take out the required amount of tail there. So as you can see we're just gradually making the L cut, making an L cut into here. We must be very mindful not to get too close to this point here. The tail is very vulnerable here. If we go here, we've got a good chance of the tail breaking away there. So what we need to do is we need to just gently work our way in using the tail nippers to the back line there. And now we can just gently break away there and we get a nice clean edge. So again, I'm going to do the same here. Keeping away from this point. So I only get to be about one millimetre there. That's all we need to be. Then we're safe to place our nippers in line with the cut, gently pull down and away to get a nice clean edge. All I need to do now is just take out the remaining part of the tile in the corner piece here. There we have. A nice clean cut. So now I've cut the shape out required. I'm just using a towel file. Just gently take away any of the biscuit that could be protruding from the cut. Before Buttering the tile, putting the adhesive on the back of it. I'm going to check that we're happy with the cut, that the cut's the correct size. I can see that with the two, when I put the two mil spacer in, there, 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 that I'm going to be perfectly in line there, and this covers the side of the niche. This part of the tile covers the side of the niche. So I'm now going to butter the tile. As you can see, got a nice straight line through there. There's no lippy bits jumping up different. It's all nice and level. <clears throat> what we need to do now is we need to cut, take this cut up here. So I'm going to just approximately mark where the towel is, the cut is. Just going to approximately mark it where the, the cut it, what size the cut is there. And as you can see, I've already got the gauge set for this cut. So now all I need to do is make sure I've got the right half of the cut against the gauge. I can see it's the bigger part that I need to put against the gauge. So again. Go through. I can see how many cuts I need. I need one, two, three. Oh, so I need a fourth one, but that's going to be an L-shaped cut. So I'm now just going to cut three tiles all the same size against the gauge. Tiles, using the tile snappers, placing them in line, I can now cut
So I now have these three tiles that I'm going to place up here. One, two, three. So buckle with these in. Place it here. Here, get my spaces. Place it on there. Go and check it with my fingers. Things will be nice and flat, even. Place my towel spaces in. Okay. Now with my hand, just checking it all nice and even, flush. And the towel edge covers the inside of the niche or window seal, uh, reveal. Okay. I'm now going to mark a pencil line over the top of the niche on top of these two tiles. This clarifies the height all the way through of the cut, the size of the cut. So I can now, using my pen, place the tile on the pencil line, as I know this is the height. The pencil line is the height of this tile here. So I can now hold it against the line and mark the underside of the niche there. I'm gonna check it here to see it's all the same size which it is. So now I can set my machine, cutting machine. This is the piece I need. This, the larger part of the tile, the cut, is what I'm going to need to place along here. Put my mark there. I'm now going to transfer the tile over to here and I'm going to mark it here. And again, I'm going to put a little X there, a little mark. And as we know, we've got the machine set here on the gauge. So, using the set square, I'm going to draw a line through there, through there. This gauge is set for the tail cut going up the side. I've got my little X there, so I know this is the piece that lines up with the gauge. Place it in there, tight to the gauge, and score it away. I know that is now the perfect cut of that size. I can now, I'm now going to reset the gauge to this mark here. This piece of tile, this cut here, is going to be the piece that runs right along the top of the niche. So I can now alter my gauge, line up perfectly on the line, reset the gauge and score down to the line there and we stop.
On completion of this side, we're now going to tape this side up. Right, now I'll fix the cuts. I'm just going to check that they're in line. They're not staggered or protruding where they should not be. I can feel that they're all nicely in line and at the correct height. And they're covering the inside of the window frame, window frame or the niche. We now need to do our final weld cut. So I'm going to place the tile again where it needs to go. go. I'm going to mark it approximately here. And we're going to put a little X there, or mark, or circle, or whatever symbol you want to put next to this one here. Because this piece here, this cut here, we have got marked set on the cutting machine. So I now know that this is the mark set on the cutting machine. I'm now going to mark it on the top of the niche there. And I'm going to slide the tile along, holding it on the pencil line. This is the joint line making sure that the tile cut is all the same. 
that's good. And that's good. Okay, so I'm place the towel I've just cut where it needs to go and check that it's the right size I can see here I'm allowing my joint my two mil joint and the towel is perfectly in line the cut there I'm checking here that the towel is on the line the pencil line this is the joint line that it covers the cut here perfectly okay I'm now going to fix the towel Yeah, leave, leave the spaces in for eight hours and you can take them out just just for peace of mind you know some adhesives depending on the what the climate's like if it's a hot summer's day then the tile adhesive will dry out quicker if you're fixing tiles in a damp basement in the middle of winter then obviously they will take longer to dry out so you'd have to be mindful about how long to leave them in for okay cool, cool. i'm now going to put these three cuts in here we've got the machine gauge set we set it here, didn't we? Remember when we put the little X across there? So we knew it was the piece we wanted. So. Leave them like that for a little while and I'll just alter them as I need to. Right, so I'll put my level on. Just making sure they all stay there. I'm gonna, when this tile dries here, it's wet at the moment where I just washed it, I'm gonna get some masking tape. And I shall take these tiles up and here to stop them sliding down. But I'm not overly concerned they're gonna fall right off because the adhesive is mixed to the right consistency and I'll put enough adhesive on the back of the tiles so I know they won't fall. So I can just leave them like so. Okay, perfect, good.
Now I've placed the tiles on, I'm now going to make sure that we have the correct joint gap. So two mil, two mil, two millimetres. Move that across. Oh. So place that in there that way, that way it won't fall. I'll place that one there like so. And then that one there like so. And like so. As I can see now, got a nice straight cut along the bottom. I'm gonna just tape them up and I've got the correct two mil gap along the top. Nicely. I'm just going to place some masking tape on the top of these tiles here and onto the board to ensure that they don't slide down and they stay in line. So let's just take them up like that. Again, this one, tile, and then just gently move it up till we can see where we're in line, where we need to be. And then we just tape it up to stop the tile moving. Again, last one, line her up, that's it, there, now we can do a little bit of fiddling, just making sure we're perfectly where we want to be, that's perfect, so I'm in line, I run my fingers, my fingers will tell me if the toes are lipping or they're running in line, and I can see they're running perfectly in line. Just the last little bit of fiddling, making sure the tile joints are even. See that's a lovely straight line there. Line's perfectly straight at the top and I've got a two mil joint right the way across the same as I've here. Good job.